Hello YouTube fam, it's your Uncle Tim. This is Uncle Tim Rants and Reviews, the channel that I ran and I review. I was talking the other day and I said something feels off. It seems like something missing. You know, I was talking about, you know, the pandemic and what happened and all of that and people were like, man, it's like you trying to gripe on a pandemic. No, I'm not. What I said about the pandemic and I think a lot of people didn't understand this. It was a clusterfuck. There were people giving misinformation, and I'm talking about the government. They had people out here out of control, scared, you know, having you to just go get checked over and over again. And how did people get COVID? Think about it. How did people get this virus? If it wasn't airborne, how did people get it? The only way that I could assume that you got it was on those swabs. I think it was already on a swab. Most people who took the swab caught it. So I want you to sit back and think about this. I'm not saying that the virus didn't exist. I'm not saying that wasn't a big part in American history. I'm not saying that. I'm saying the way they ramped it up and made it seem like it was this and that. People did die. I don't know what people died from. Because all of a sudden, the way they made a hell of a fuss, a hell of a stink about this, you know, telling people to stay in the house for two years and people did. And, you know, all of this stuff and people like, man, Uck, you don't understand. I do understand. Hell, a lot of us got sick taking that damn virus. I mean, taking that um, vaccine. A lot of y'all don't know that. A lot of people died taking that vaccine. You didn't know that because they didn't tell you that. You didn't know that when people did a lot of this, nothing changed. See, you think a lot of people are thinking right now that, you know, 100% of America is vaccinated. 90% of America is vaccinated. 80% of America is vaccinated. It's not even that many. It ain't even damn, what? It's like, what, 55% to 60%? Because a lot of people didn't take it. Even the, a lot of the care workers, a lot of the people that were um, deemed as superheroes during the pandemic, you know, the healthcare workers, a lot of them didn't take it because they're like, wait, hold on. You know, a lot of people were telling me they had to create triages and all of that here. They had to, treat, you know, do that here in Illinois and Chicago. Dude, I went to the damn hospital. The fucker was empty. I said, wait, hold on. Why all the people that they were saying on the news, people falling out and all over the place. No, you come to fan out. It wasn't like what they were saying. Now, see, a lot of y'all don't get on me and say, I had people that died from this. Uh, I know a lot of people who passed away from it, too. Something. I don't know what it was. But all of a sudden now, it's not even relevant. If you got if you got COVID, your ass can go straight to work now. You don't even need a day off. What happened? It started affecting the rich people money because people started using it just like the rich people were. They started getting paid from it. The rich people start realizing, uh-uh, oh, it's okay. It ain't on. It ain't on hurt anything. You can go right back to work. You'll be all right. You don't even have to quarantine them. How? What changed? Explain to me what changed. Ain't shit changed. Did you see that? Nothing changed. See, people make it seem like there was something that changed. Well, people got vaccinated, and it did. Do you know how many times? Shit, I didn't. I'm vaccinated. You know how many times I had COVID? Do you know how many times the people I work with had COVID? Dude, this shit is a joke. A vaccine, true, it's not a cure. But a vaccine supposed to help at least stop some of it, you know, from occurring. But you know what? Didn't stop any damn thing. It was just a hot ass mess. A lot of this was just wrong. And it was just to the point now we're starting to see the truth. We see that a lot of this is just smoke and mirrors. We're not being treated like we got common sense. We, the people, we, the American people. Someone asked me the other day about Donald Trump. And they said, you wrong as hell for saying Donald Trump made more money as president than anything. He didn't even take a salary. I'm not talking about his salary as president. I'm talking about his companies. As the president, 
he put his son in control of his businesses. Guess what? His father is the president. Guess what? People wanted to do business with the president. They said in an interview that they were expected to make damn near 300% profit. How the hell does that work? Donald Trump once told you, we do do the shit in that house that you think we do. Everything that you think happens in that house is happening. And guess what? We fail to believe him. We fail to believe that the stuff he was telling us was true. Now we're sitting back looking at this whole situation. We're looking at the state of the economy, inflation, joblessness. People are in despair. People are depressed right now. Half of this damn country, in my opinion, is going through some form of a depression. People are at some stage in their life where they're just like, I'm just ready to give up shit. You know, I'm, I'm tired. You know, I don't work my ass off and I don't even see myself retiring. You know, and I see a lot of people out here, they don't work themselves to the bone and ain't got shit to show for it. This is why I said, I am so happy with the generation before us. They're out here living, they're out here enjoying, they're out here understanding. And this is what we're supposed to do, understand. We're supposed to understand the commitment that it takes. But we're so busy worried about random ass people. And that's my point. We need to stop worrying about random people. We need to stop worrying about other countries. And I, I don't mean it in a negative way, and I'm not calling these people random. I'm saying we need to deal with the people who are here. We need to deal with us we need to fix it we need to fix the problems that our country is having let's fix that first before we start helping everybody else man the biggest problems that we are having is that there are so many things at play that we don't know about when i was talking to you about that real id that shit is different you know a lot of people don't realize you would have to have the real id to travel from state to state the real ID is basically a passport in the U.S. Nobody realized that if you don't have a real ID, you would have to travel with your passport. Do you understand that? Did you catch what they do? Did you catch the subtle nuance, the subtle shift? They're dividing this country up. And a lot of people are not paying no attention to that. A lot of people just think it's some random shit that's happening and we could just talk ourselves out of it and it's going to be okay. No. Dude, everybody is up in arms about random shit. I don't see people out here losing a man over food. I don't see people out here losing a man over the price of rent and mortgages. I don't see people losing their man over inflation. I don't see people losing their man over health care. You got to tell me the price of going to school now is astronomical. It costs the price of a damn house to go to school. An education that I really, I'm just going to be real, just real with you. It ain't going to do shit for you. Most companies hire people who have what? Experience. If you don't have any and you still got your $100,000 $100, degree or, you know, fuck, $300,000 degree, Guess what? The job that you get ain't gonna pay that back. See, this is what they doing to you. You already saddled with debt. See, the whole situation is set up to put you in debt. But you could work the rest of your life to pay that debt off. That's the American dream. That's the dream that they want you to believe in. The dream is paying off debt. The dream is to be debt free. The dream is to live your life before you retire. Because when you retire, and we're talking about retirement at 65, dude, half of the people who make it to 65, half of them are not in good health. So what the hell are you going to do at 65? You can't go skydiving, jumping out of planes, bungee cord jumping, uh, parasailing, uh, uh, jet skiing. No, you need to do that while you're still young. This is why I love this new generation. They doing all that shit now. They like, look, I don't know what the year is going to bring me. I don't know 
you know, back then, y'all were able to pay y'all bills. We can't even pay them now. This shit is out of hand. And I'm going to be honest. Back then, you know, hell, people say things were affordable. They were, but you didn't make no damn money. Nothing affordable if you don't make no money. I don't give a damn if the rent is $300. If you're making $325 an hour, shit. <laughs> and you full-time, bro. It still don't look good for you. See, that's the thing that people don't understand. You know, my whole thing is it's a work in progress. It's a catch-22. You got to look at all of this, man. And this is why I say, man, you got to have various opinions in life. You got to make different opinions. You got to make sure that each thing that you do makes sense. Because out here, they're trying to get you, man. They're trying to stick you up with some bullshit. And like I said, a lot of us out here falling for the okie doke. Man, it's just real, bro. You know, for a minute, I had to sit back and recollect and rethink some stuff, man, because, you know, I almost fell in a trap where the man tried to actually get me to actually do some shit I didn't want to do. You know, oh, no, but see, you know, you got to do it anyway because these ain't no more good. And I'm like, shit, if they ain't hurting me, I'm going to keep them. I said, when I'm ready to let go of some shit, that's when I do it. But I don't do it because somebody else want me to do it. That ain't how your life works. Your life is not dictated by somebody else. Your life is dictated by you because you're the only one that suffer the consequences of your life. You know, there may be people that's going to suffer some issues from some shit you do. But primarily, you are the one that's going to suffer because it's your life. This is why I say you need to make good decisions based on, you know, real information, real facts. You know, before you go and listen to one person's opinion and say, oh, man, this is this gospel. No, you need to go get two or three other opinions. That way you could have an informed, you know, opinion, man. Dude, I ain't trying to listen to none of that shit. I'm not trying to listen to one person tell me something or two people tell me something. I need three people to tell me something. I'm going to do what I need to do and I'm going to look around. Like I said, at the end of the day, man, I was looking at people winning the lottery. You know, I wasn't jealous of them, but, you know, I was upset that they were blowing the money. I was upset because, you know, you got all this money. You know, everybody buying, you know, and, you know, getting financial advisors. You don't need no damn financial advisor. What they're advising you on. Don't ever get somebody a blank cop lunch, you know, with your money. Uh-uh. There need to be steps in place. You need to talk to people who know people. You need to do business with reputable people. You need to research. And I need to let you know, hell, if you want a billion dollars, expect to at least blow like five or six, you know, million up to 10 because you're going to blow through some money because you never had that type of money before. And that's the thing people don't understand. You know, keeping it real is one thing. Being real is a whole nother thing. And this is what I'm talking about. Man, we need to man up on every situation and make everything work. You know, and this is the thing that I look at. Man, we're working on things. We're taking our time and we're moving as fast as we can. Keep doing you. Don't let nobody out talk you, over talk you, and make you feel less than, man. If you're not happy where you at, get your ass up and walk away. Sometimes being alone is the best thing you could ever do. You got to learn how to be by your damn self. And that's the thing that I think a lot of people ain't telling you. You got to learn how to be by yourself. You got to learn how to deal with you. Because you're so busy worried about how to deal with some damn body else. You didn't learn how to deal with yourself. You're so busy catering to somebody else that you didn't cater to your damn self. When you sick, take the time you need to get better. Don't worry about nobody else. Don't worry about that damn job. Man, because if you fall out today, they're going to hire somebody the same day to take your damn place. Friend told me she gave her job two weeks notice. And she said, no. Nah. She said, effective immediately. She said, I can't give you two weeks notice. No, they wanted two weeks from her and she couldn't give it. And they were mad as hell at her. They were like, why can't you get two weeks notice? She said, because my job want me to start immediately. When I leave today, they want me to start tomorrow. Well, you know, if you do that, 
we're not going to be able to um, put a good, put you in good standards. You won't be able to be hired back. If I'm leaving this damn company, I don't want to come back. It's a reason I'm leaving in the first damn place. That should have been something. But you know, my thing is, when they fire people, they don't give them two weeks notice to let them find another damn job or anything like that. They fire your ass effective immediately. So you should be able to do what? Quit effective immediately. That's your life. You know what? We talk about people like LeBron James and people like that saying that he was wrong going from sport team to sport team. See, we're looking at our favorite player going to a different team to play for somebody else. No, he's looking at, look, I got to feed my family, take care of my family, support my family, put food on that table. That's what that decision means to him. He's going to his job. What if somebody told you you shouldn't go to another job to make more money or to actually get better benefits or to get treated better? Damn right, you're supposed to. This is why I say sometimes in these situations, we got to man our business, man our pockets, because that ain't got shit to do with your pocket. You need to leave it the hell alone. Walk away. That's what I do. I learn to walk away and shut the hell up. You know, somebody was saying something to me one day and they said something to me that I thought was really fucked up. And I just looked at them, right? But I'm going to tell you something. I happened to see this person on a bus. I mean, on the train stop as I was walking to my bus and they looked at me and got scared. My point is, you never know who lives close to you. You never know who damn near live across the street from you because you're not paying attention. This is why I say, think before you talk shit. Don't go talking shit to people you don't know because you may feel like shit later because you don't know what's about to happen. Because see, we all feel like we're the victim in our story. And motherfucker, you are the protagonist. You're not the victim. You're the protagonist. You're the person keeping this shit up. Sometimes you got to be quiet and mind your business. I don't mind other people's business. You know, a guy said, man, look, I ain't coming to work. Man, fuck that. I ain't coming to work. Dude, that ain't my check. You don't come to work. That don't affect me. You don't come to work. That's your job. You know your job. Shit, you know if you don't come, you may not have one. This is what I'm telling you. This is why I say you stay in your lane and your ass is going to be good. But to later, peace and thank you for watching.